A Life of Bliss. Being a brand new biographical series about bachelor bliss with Brenda Bruce as Anne Fellows, Colin Gordon as her husband Tony Fellows, Muriel Pavlo as Tina Holiday, and George Cole as the shy young bachelor himself, David Alexander Bliss. Does Bliss find his basic shyness a disadvantage in everyday life? I spoke to him a couple of days ago and put the question to him. Well, of course it's a disadvantage. Only a fool would deny it. So why haven't I? Tell me, David, how would you describe your particular type of shyness? Paralysis of the mind with a mouth working overtime. <laughs> but you don't let it worry you. Life's a challenge. Obstacles made to be overcome. You mean you still believe you'll overcome it one of these days? I already have. You have? Yes. I forget which day it was. <laughs> but I overcame it for a full 24 hours. That long, without getting into one of your muddles? Yes, but to be fair, I think losing my voice helped. <laughs> Laryngitis. About my only hope, to have it permanently. Willpower doesn't work. And the more I struggle to control myself, the tenser I become, the worse the mess I get into. But you've known your girlfriend, Tina, quite a time. No, 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 look, I don't want to discuss my private life. I know, but I take it that's an advantage. Yes, and as I'm more relaxed with her and she puts up with me, you can take it, it's different. Meaning what? Well, I don't have to control myself with her because she never puts up a struggle. <laughs> no, 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 no. I never have to struggle because she doesn't mind being taken advantage of. <laughs> doesn't mind me messing her around. <laughs> and mind me doing my worst. Doing her wrong. <laughs> you see, it is a disadvantage. Yes, I do see. But, as I said before, life's a challenge. Tina made to be overcome. No. <laughs> and with that vintage model back to the present and over to the fellow's house to hear from David and his married sister Anne about the export man. <laughs> know something, Anne? I am on the horns of a dilemma. Then there's only one thing to do. Change chairs. <laughs> do you want to hear about it or not? If you eat your breakfast at the same time, it's getting cold. Yes, okay. Somebody, I'd guess, somebody I... Now, don't speak with your mouth full. You don't seem to realise I am at the crossroads. You do get around. Only a moment ago, you were on the... Somebody, I'd guess, somebody I met during... Psyche, like go away. You wouldn't be doing it on purpose. No, it's this dog of yours. She's trying to hypnotise me into giving her some of my breakfast. Hmm, she never tries that on me at mealtimes. I've trained her not to. You always give her tidbits. I know, that's how I trained her. <laughs> Here you are, Psyche. Piece of sausage. <laughs> Now, that's something she's never learned. What? Where tidbits end and fingertips start. <laughs> what did all that mean? What do I expect when the tidbits are so small? <laughs> Where was I? Somebody, as a guest, somebody you met during... During the three years I worked abroad, mm -hmm. has recommended me for a job with Marlow and Ridgeway Limited. Marlow and Ridgeway? Toy makers since 1897. Pioneered walkie-talkie dolls and now send them right round the world. What, without rewinding? <laughs> They're forming a separate export department and want a bright, go-ahead young man to run it for them. Who can you suggest? I'd say I stood as good a chance as the next man. Why? What's wrong with him? The snag is, and I am ignoring you, that they're only offering a year's contract. To start with, perhaps. Yes, but I'm not only established in my present job, Anne. There's a pension at the end of it. I know, and only about 40 years to go before you draw it. You don't think security is important? I'm not sure it even exists. Life's a gamble. So you might just as well take risks. Well, you do, every day, if you think about it. You could walk out of here now and be knocked down by a bus, pass a demolition site and be buried under falling debris, or even be struck by lightning. That settles it. I'm not moving out of the house. <laughs> Risking the sack for not turning up at the office. Okay, you've made your point. But, well, part of the job would be entertaining overseas buyers. So? Well, it comes down to whether or not I've got away with people. When it comes to people, you get away with murder. <laughs> you think I ought to try for it? The chance of a lifetime. Ask Tony and see if he doesn't agree with me. Well, I will when he comes down. Do. It'll be a wonderful chance for him as well. Mm, to do what? Give you the full married man's lament. Complete with sighs. David, old lad, he'll say, grab the chance while you can. While you're still... Sigh. Single. Once you're married, heavy sigh. You can't afford to take risks. You're the breadwinner. Sigh. Only my family prefers cake. A dig at me for wanting more housekeeping. You've got kids to clothe and endless, endless clothes to buy for your wife. One last heartfelt heaving of the chest and end of lament. You'll be lucky. Well, there'll be more. About all the golden opportunities he's had to miss through being married. Well, has he missed all that many? A man we met at a party did offer him a partnership in some big scheme guaranteed to make a cool quarter of a million. And Tony turned it down because he had to play safe? No, because he hadn't got the man's name, address or phone number and never heard from him again. <laughs> Apart from that, it was definite. Oh, now, look, you're not trying to tell me they've all been like that. All myths, all based on a germ of truth. Oh, not complete myths, then. Not, not if they were based Near on... Near enough, believe me. 
But then there's something of a Walter Mitty in every man. Dreaming of fame and fortune? Yes, and making marriage the excuse for them not coming through. Oh, but Tony has done jolly well. I know. That's what I'm always telling him. Morning, David. Hi, Jay. Oh, fine, thanks, Walter. You? <laughs> oh, fine, thanks, Tony. I'm sorry about that. Uh, we were just talking about Tony Mitty. Um, <laughs> Tony Tycoon. Um, Walter Mitty. Walter Mitty. I was about to say I'm sorry I'm laid down, but perhaps it's just as well. <laughs> And good morning to you, too. I'll pour out your coffee first, darling. Anything in the paper this morning? Yes, the bills from the paper shop. That's what I call starting the day right. Where? Stapled to the middle page. Yeah. Symbolic, once you're married. Huh. Bills to your staple diet. I say, ahead of schedule. What? <laughs> the lament. The, the, um, lament? The lamentable fact is that the cost of living has gone up. What prompted that? Uh, David's not his usual self this morning. He has been so far. <laughs> Got the chance of a wonderful new export job with uh... Marlow and Ridgeway Limited, makers of Midge toys. Only, well, in a way, I I'd be on twelve months' trial. Then they want their money back. <laughs> oh, seriously, though, Tony, what would you do if you were me? Yeah, I won't depress you by saying what, but I'd have done it years ago. How about my breakfast? I'm on my way now. Mm. Talk some sense into him, darling. He's not sure it's worth the risk because they're only offering a year's contract. Not worth the risk. My dear old lad, you must be out of your tiny mind. Well, was that ever in doubt? Oh, certainly not the size. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. What, what's the next move? Well, ring up and arrange an interview with Mr. Marlowe. Then phone today. Well, let the future take care of itself. Why not? You don't have to worry about the future, not yet, that is. Of course, once you're married, do it. Uh, oh, there it is. <laughs> what? what? First heartfelt heaving of the chest. <laughs> Understandably. After all, it is. What's um... Sam been saying about me? What makes you think she said anything? Long experience of deciphering your slips of the tongue. Yes, well, you slipped up this time and interrupted me. She hasn't said anything about me at all? No, no, not a word. Well, as I was lying, Tony... Uh, <laughs> as I was sighing, su su saying, you were right the first time. No, it is different when you're married. After all, you can't afford to take risks then, can you? No, indeed. You've got responsibilities. You're the breadwinner. Only your family prefers cake. Yeah, my family... <laughs> now, how did you know about that? I didn't know. Know what? That you'd made the same joke to Anne. Did I say I had? No. Then how do you know that's what I meant? You wouldn't accept telepathy as an answer. <laughs> no, I thought not. Well, I, I somehow gave oh, the impression... Oh, say, David, what do you take me for? It's quite plain Anne's been drearing on about me as usual, and I know exactly what she's been saying. Well, I'm not surprised. I've told you most of it. Ah, so you admitted, was her? <laughs> yes, but it was all light-hearted. I mean, Anne doesn't drear on mind your back, Tony. You ought to know that. No, I do, oddly enough. <laughs> More coffee? Yeah, I think perhaps I will. Thanks, Tony. You can pour your own and one for me, two lumps. Yes, right, though. Heaven knows, I, I don't regret getting married, but... Uh, right, you know, can't take the same risks, sir. I missed a good few opportunities myself. You know. I know, so Anne was telling me. In passing. What was she telling you? About all the golden opportunities you had to miss. Um, had to miss. It was two lumps, wasn't it? And how do you explain that flip? What flip? That flip? What flip? Oh, oh the miss slip flip. Um, <laughs> the miss slip. Well, I honestly can't say. Can't say. <laughs> I know why you can't say, because Anne's told you I've never had any worthwhile offers. They're all complete myths, or put it another way, a pack of lies. Oh, no, that's not true, Tony. She never mentioned the word pack. Well, the word complete. <laughs> but it was always... You've been living with us ever since you got back from abroad, haven't you? Well, yes. Seems to me there's a connection between the country's economic situation and my marriage to Anne. There is. We may have to export you to survive. Here you are, darling. Bacon, two eggs, and three sausages. <laughs> Bacon, two eggs, and two sausages. <laughs> You're a bad dog. You know, Sonny Anne, breakfasts like this make up for all the golden opportunities I've missed. Eh, uh, do they? Yes, and what's more, it's a great comfort to know that in my wife's eyes I can do no wrong. David? Uh, don't worry, don't worry, he didn't make a single flip. <laughs> oh, that's all right, then. Single flip. Uh, I'll ring up Mr. Marlowe's secretary and fix up the interview the moment I get to the office. I've decided. Good for you. Terribly sudden, though. Yes, I wonder why. Uh, David, didn't you say your general manager was calling in on you this morning? Between half past nine and ten. Of course, it's not Mr. Hood now, is it? No, uh, a chap called Gibson. How are you getting on with him? Not at all well. And he doesn't even know me yet. Well, you don't see all that much of him, do you? Well, hardly at all. Luckily, he's got five other branch offices to look after, apart from... Between half past nine and ten? Yes, so I'll have to be there prompt at half past. It's twenty-five past now. Well, I know, but it only takes me twenty minutes. Twenty-five past now? Good gracious, so it is. 
Oh, well, at least I can stop worrying about the security of this job and about my pension. Why? Well, chances are I'll get the push. <laughs> David Bliss? Anne, were you in trouble? What, for being late? No, old Gibson hasn't turned up yet. Have you phoned? Mr. Marlowe's secretary about the interview. Yes, I have, and I'm seeing him at ten o'clock tomorrow morning. I'm sure you'll get the job. I'd like to think so. I know you will. But, David, I shouldn't say anything to Mr. Gibson until you've actually got it. After all, you never know. Well, you just said you did know. I know, but I could easily be wrong. you better make some excuse for not being there tomorrow morning, you know, just in case. Yes, but w- 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 what can I tell you? Anything. Except that your grandmother's died. That one's been done to death. And how about the dentist's appointment? That's a reliable old standby. Well, it's not a question of the excuse being reliable, Anne. It's me I'm worried about. What's he like? Gibson? Yes. Well, pally enough on the surface. Puffed up with his own importance underneath. A snake by any other name. He's definitely venomous. Morning, Mr. Adamar. Bliss in. I'll have to hang up, Anne. He's just slithered in. Good luck. Goodbye. Hello there, Bliss. Hello there, pal. Hello there, poison. Hello, <laughs> Sorry about that. I, I was thinking of something my sister said on the phone. Private calls during office hours. I don't think we can stand for that, you know. Well, I'll pull up a chair for you, sir. No, not stopping. Just drops in with the Williamson file. I want to have a natter about it, but I'm pushed for time today. Next time I'm in. Uh, when, uh, when will that be, sir? Tomorrow morning. I had a feeling. About what time? Shall we say ten o'clock? Oh, no, let's not. I mean, I, I'm, I'm afraid I won't be here, sir. All right, taking the day off? Uh, no, I've got an appointment with my grandmother. <laughs> uh, my grandmother's dentist. What the heck's your grandmother got to do with it? Uh, we always talk about him as being her dentist. Oh, why? Oh, she was going to him long after she was dead. <laughs> well, um, before we did. Uh, actually, everybody I know goes to him. A good man, is he? Oh, yes, a very reliable old standby. Good old chap. Everybody stands by him. Swears by him. What the heck's the matter with you this morning? <laughs> Nervous about tomorrow morning, sir. If there's one thing in the world I hate, it's interviews. With, with the dentist. Well, I'll be here at 11.30. And you won't be back by then, or I might suspect the dentist is an excuse. I'm like that, you know. Well, I see you then. Oh, uh, what's his name? The dentist, sir? Oh, Mr. Forbes. Oh, I haven't bothered since I moved down here. It's high time I had a check-up. Uh, jot down his phone number for me. Oh, yes. right sir. If he's really that good. Well, the best dentist for miles around. I'll ring him today and mention your name. You're the second best for miles around. There's somebody even better. In fact, there's no comparison. No? Well, everybody I know is changing to him. Uh, but a minute ago, you said everybody you knew went to your bloke. Well, that just shows how quickly they're changing. <laughs> I mean, that is, I have heard the most glowing reports about this other bloke. <laughs> I should think he's booked up for months ahead, then. Well, bound to be. Uh, in that case, I'll settle for the second best. You're Mr. Forbes. 994-3592. Thanks for recommending him. Don't mention it, sir. Well, I wish I hadn't. Taken up so much of your time. I had an interesting letter from head office the other day. You did? Asking me to submit recommendations for reducing the number of branch offices in this area. In other words, heads are going to roll. Ha, ha, ha. Goodbye, Bliss. Chop, chop, sir. Um... I start the day talking about my pension and end up under the guillotine. I doubt if he'll check up on you, even if he does ring the dentist. Well, that's what Tony said when I told him about it. Well, I'm sure we're right. What's this? Well, a copy of the toy manufacturer's trade journal with an article about Marlowe and Ridgway in it. I've marked the page. With pencil? No, sweaty thumbprints. <laughs> you worried about the interview? Well, it's bound to be more important to me now. That... Right, I'm ready. What time are they expecting us? Half past seven. I'll ask Clive Howard if he knows anything about Marlowe, David. It'd be helpful to know what sort of man you're facing tomorrow. I'll need all the help I can get. On the contrary, I'd say you've got everything to look forward to. Money to spend and a chance to travel. Well, meaning what? Occasional business trips abroad? No, regular trips between here and the labour exchange. <laughs> He's in the state now without you making him worse. Uh, isn't uh, Tina coming around? Well, any minute now. Why? Gaze into her eyes. Tell her you love her and you'll soon forget about tomorrow. Well, there's something in that. I suppose you have told her you love her. Well, no, not in so many words. It only takes three. <laughs> well, I want to be absolutely sure first. You told me you were weeks ago now. Well, I think I am. Well, then take a risk on it and tell her, sir. Well, we're back to life's a gamble, eh? Well, you never get anywhere unless you do tell her. That's the story of David's life. What? More stalemate than soulmate. <laughs> well, it hasn't reached the marrying stage, eh? No, nah, that's the biggest gamble of all. You don't have to tell me that. I lost. Heavily. I'm just going to put my coat on and switch Alexander's light off. What? No, thank you. You stay in there. Does Tina know about the Exmoor job? Yes, I rang her this afternoon. What did she say? That she was sure I got a wonderful future ahead of me and couldn't be more pleased. Naturally. She's hoping to share it with you. Well, I'm certain the thought of marriage has never entered Tina's head. Oh, my dear chap, it's been there since she was 12. (laughs) 
But whether or not I was successful definitely wouldn't enter Don't it. you believe it. Women, very practical. They pay lip service to the idea of love in a garret, then arrange for you to meet father. Why, in the connection? First thing he asks is, what are your prospects? Well, Tina's got prospects of her own. Working on a magazine must pay well, too. So there you are. Well, oh, that'll be her now. All right, I'll go. I believe I do love her, you know. What's more, I I've had a terrific urge to tell her so. Then why the dickens haven't you? Well, because of the risk involved, I suppose. The risk of, of being rebuffed. Yes. Well, I can't believe there's the slightest reason for you to worry about that. Well, that's very reassuring. After all, you've had so much experience, haven't it? Well, there's only one way to find out. Yes, but David, not the moment she arrives. You can't tell a girl you love her in cold blood. They take it very seriously. Well, so do I. Well, make sure you do a good warm-up. Honestly, I really think you were talking about a comedy show. Mm. <laughs> Knowing you, I probably am. All the world's a stage and all women love pretty speeches. They're my downfall. Well, there you are. That's show business. <laughs> Lead up to it slowly. Work up a nice romantic atmosphere. Oh, huh? well, I've got nothing to lose by trying. And everything to gain. So, all right, I'll have a bash at him. <laughs> Here you go, Tina. Hello. Oh, hello. Hello, darling. <laughs> hello, Psyche. Would you forgive us if we dashed off straight away? They'd never forgive us if we didn't. <sighs> Bye. Goodbye. Bad news, honey. I can't stay long. Oh, no. My editor sprang an interview on me at the last moment. Gerald Booth, the author. Well, how long can you stay? Oh, say, half an hour. Oh, that's all right. We've still got time if we get down to it straight away. <laughs> get down to what? Well, I'm afraid I can't tell you yet. Why not? Well, I've got to get you warmed up first. <laughs> Here, I'll help you off with your coat. Warmed up? Get you into the mood for it. If I didn't know you so well, I'd suspect the worst. How about giving me a clue? A clue? Yes. Well, it's something I've got a terrific urge to do. <laughs> Perhaps I don't know you as well as I thought. You will by the time I finish. <laughs> is, it, uh, is it something serious? Well, girls take it seriously, yes. And so do I. I mean, after all, it does involve a certain risk. A risk? <laughs> well, obviously. You've just got to be talking about... No. No, you can't have changed that much. Well, I don't know about that, but I do know we're wasting time. Come and sit on the sofa. You've got me worried. Well, why should you worry? You've got nothing to lose. I don't like the sound of that. You'll like it all right once I get going. The suspense is terrible. Well, there you are. That's show business. Come what may, I'm determined to have a bash. I should have listened to Mother. Why? What did she say? Never mind what she said. What are you trying to say? That I love you. Oh, so that's what it was all about. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry to laugh, honey, only it sounded as if you meant something very different. Why? What did I say? Well, for instance, that um, it was something you had a terrific urge to do. Well, I can't see what possible double meaning that could... Oh, yes, I can. <laughs> You didn't seriously imagine that I, I... Good heavens, it never crossed my mind. Well, it never would. I know it wouldn't, really. Uh, actually, that, 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 that's not strictly true. I mean, well, sitting beside you, close beside you, I, I'm not entirely unaware that... That is, I mean... Well, you know, I, I do... Not that I would, of course, but it does. <laughs> I'd be livid if it didn't. I do love you, Tina, with all my heart. Yes. Yes, that's how I love you. With, with all my heart. I love you. <laughs> Do you? No. No, please don't ask me. Then you, you, you don't. Oh, it isn't that, darling. It's just that... Just what? Uh, that I don't want to say it until I'm absolutely sure. Oh, go on. Take a risk on it. I did. Um... <laughs> You're not sure either? Y yes, I am. Completely sure, I think. <laughs> yes. Well, I won't say it now. The moment's past. Next time round, perhaps. Uh, are you feeling more relaxed about tomorrow? Tomorrow? Oh, about the interview, you mean. Oh, I wish you hadn't reminded me. Now, don't start that again. You've got a wonderful future ahead of you, and, oh, I couldn't be more pleased. Well, naturally. You're hoping to share it with me. I've just told you. I'm not sure yet. I know, but you women are very practical. Are you suggesting that would make any difference? Well, are you saying you'd spend the rest of your life in a garret? If I had to, yes. Enter your father. My father? And what young man are your prospects? I'd better go before I blow my top. Oh, come on, I was only joking. If I was interested in money, I'd, I'd, I'd marry somebody like, like Gerald Booth. He's stinking rich. Well, I see, so that's why you're rushing off in such a hurry. I won't count up to ten. It wouldn't be enough. Goodbye. Oh, no, look, Tina, we can't leave it like this. There isn't time to sort it out now. And, oh, besides, it, it, it just isn't our night. Night, darling, don't bother to show me out. I, I'll give you a ring when I get back to the flat. Bye. Oh! <laughs>
I couldn't agree more. If I'd known how things were going to turn out when I walked out of here this morning, I'd have settled for being knocked down by a bus. David! Just come in. It's a big day for your master, isn't it, Psyche? I was on the phone in the other room. Couldn't you use the phone in here? Not at the same time, no. It can relate to your interview. Apparently, Tina's in the bath. Let's see how you look. According to her flatmate, Sheila, that is. Yes, very smart. I don't call it smart. I call it a barefaced lie. All right, so I said some pretty tactless things last night. There's no excuse for her refusing to speak to me. Oh, don't be silly. She'll ring back as soon as she gets out of the bath. She promised to ring last night. You know, I don't think that tie goes with that suit. Oh, and David, you can't wear those socks. Sit down and have your breakfast and I'll... Morning, dear, lad. Morning. Uh, back in a second, darling. I know. Stroke of luck, old Clive Howard, knowing Marlowe personally, wasn't it? Then? Hmm? Yes, yes, it was. Uh, apparently, Marlowe is highly intelligent, but essentially human. Now, that gives us a slant on the interview. It does. An uneven match, but you could win on sympathy. He, um, he's also got a complete bee in his bonnet about the export or die bit. He even talks about the country living in the past and of the need for us to think of ourselves not as a nation of shopkeepers, but as super salesmen in the markets of the world. The urgent need to adopt modern methods and to seek fresh techniques. How on earth did you know? From the article in the Trade Journal. It quotes from some speech he made. Well, there you are then. You're laughing, aren't you? Well, of course I am. <laughs> what at? The thought of running their export department. And the best way of landing the job is to convince Marlowe you're just as keen as he is. In other words, that I've got to be in my bonnet. Yes, and in your case, that should come naturally. Now, that's the way to handle the interview. Base it on that speech of his, without, of course, using his exact words. Well, you really think I'd be that stupid? Don't force me. Now, mind you, David, you will have to make it sound more... Here you are, David. Another pair of socks. I have to make it sound more conversational. I picked out this tie for you. Less flowery, in fact. Mm. I don't know about flowery. No, I was talking to Tony. Yeah, yeah, a bit less, yes. It does go better with your suit. On the other hand... So do these but, socks. As she obviously enjoys a flowery phrase himself... I put them beside you, look. It might be an idea to, um... To think up one or two of my own, really. Yes, yes. Then produce them like rabbits out of a hat. For example, let me think. Or well, shouldn't I be the one thinking? Um, children are the same the world over. And I won't be content till each and every one of them is playing with midge toys. I say, that's rather good, isn't it, David? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a pity Tony can't go to the interview for me. <laughs> I know, but that would make for awful complications afterwards. Uh, eat your breakfast. Now, don't forget, uh, David, bees in your bonnet keenness. Yes, and David, another thing. Oh, now, look, you're I enough. I, I know you both mean well, but this is something I've got to do on my own. On my own, understand? I'll think up my own phrases. And I'll stick to the tie I'm wearing. And I couldn't change into these socks because I've just spread them with butter and marmalade. <laughs> I've had enough advice, thank you. All I want now is a little peace and quiet. Is that quite clear? What was one thing I... Oh, thank goodness, that'll be Tina now. Hello? Gibson here. Oh, good morning, sweetheart. Hello, good morning, sir. I rang your dentist yesterday. But strange as it may seem, he's not expecting you this morning. Uh, yes, well, I can explain that. At your office at 9.30 sharp. But I won't be there. Well, if you're not, there's really no point in turning up at all. But you don't understand, sir. I've got an appointment for an important... Hello? Mr. Gibson? Sir? Oh, dear. That was sir to say that... I know. We heard. Whatever are you going to do, David? Life's a gamble. But what odds? <laughs> Sit down, Mr. Blitz. Thank you, Mr. Marlowe. Sorry to have kept you waiting. Oh, that's all right, sir. I was quite happy toying with your secretary. <laughs> but not that you have kept me waiting long. Is toying the word you wanted? I beg your pardon, sir? Is toying the word you wanted? I can't think of any particular use for it at the moment. <laughs> you used it in connection with my secretary. Oh, good gracious, did I? Well, I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Marlowe. I meant I was talking to the doll. Uh, 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 talking to the girl. Well, you, uh, you know what all this is about. Uh, yes, sir. And uh, let me say straight away that I couldn't be keener to run the bee department. That uh, to run the export hive. That a department. But then I I've got a definite bee in my bonnet about the whole export situation. It seems to me, sir, that this country is bedded down in the past. I couldn't agree more. It's time we woke up, too, and, and thought of ourselves as, well, world salesmen. I've said to myself before now, uh, not in those exact words, of course. Well, of course not. I'm not that stupid. <laughs> you were stupid enough to think I could put it as well as you, sir. I'd say you put it very well. Uh, care for a cup of coffee? Oh, no, thank you. Your secretary gave me one while I was waiting. Hmm. Sounds as if she's taken quite a fancy to you. Well, I wouldn't know about that, sir, but I really do feel it very strongly. What? That it's vital for each and every one of us to find new ways to deflower our secretaries. <laughs> 
deflower them. But you see, new techniques when we're bedded down with them. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with me. Sex on the brain, by the sound of it. It certainly isn't that, sir. Nerves, then. Yes, sir. But even so, confident that you can increase your overseas sex. Under the sale of your products overseas. And for an obvious reason, which is... Women are the same the world over, and I won't be satisfied till I've got them all producing like rabbits. <laughs> Interviews are always nerve-wracking affairs. I suggest you try to be yourself. I have been myself. <laughs> There stands the reason I'm not the right man for the job, so I'll save you the embarrassment and say it for you. Say what, for goodness sake? There are other applicants to be seen, Mr. Bliss, but you'll be hearing from us in due course. As a matter of interest, where is the Labour Exchange? Ah, <laughs> uh, you can't be sure you haven't got the job yet. Well, I can be pretty sure, considering I told him I wasn't right for it. But he still went on with the interview, didn't he? Well, only out of politeness or sadism. <laughs> but I can be certain about my present job. Gibson's given me a month's notice. Oh, dear. Still, there's one thing about it. It's just as well. No, OK, I'll answer. Just as well Tina's disappeared out of my life. Yeah? I couldn't afford a girlfriend yeah, now that on. I'm out of... David, it's for you. And I think you're in for a surprise. Uh, you, you don't mean it's... Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's marvellous. Hello, darling. Marlo here. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, sweetheart. I didn't realise. Well, I'm terribly sorry, sir. I didn't realise. I thought I'd ring you and tell you I've decided to take a risk and give you the job. Not that I consider it all that much of a gamble. Not after this morning. Well, how do you mean, sir? I can't believe you could ever be worse. I'll be in touch. Bye. Bye, Mr. Marlo. Thanks for ringing. Yeah, I've got the job. Oh, oh congratulations, old lad. <laughs> oh, that'll be Mrs. Leggett. I'll go. <laughs> Funny. Mm -hmm. But now that I know it's all right, it, it feels flat somehow. No, probably because you're not used to the idea yet. No, it isn't that, Tony. It's, well, Tina, eh? Tina. Mm. What about me? Yeah. Did ring you this morning, darling, just after you'd left. Only Anne forgot to tell you. Tony, mm? would you, um... Would you come and give me a hand in the kitchen? Oh, funny you should say that. I was going to ask you to give me a hand in the garage. <laughs> You've got the job, then. Yes, but what's more important, I've got you. I do love you, Tina. I love you. Oh, good gracious. So you've decided to take a risk on it after all. Yes. So where do we go from here? Meet father, wedding bells, and up the aisle? Ah, oh, no. Life may be a gamble, but you've got to stick to the rules. Meaning what? Let's stop while we're winning. <laughs> That was The Life of Bliss with George Cole as David Bliss, Brenda Bruce as Anne Fellows, Colin Gordon as Tony Fellows, Muriel Pavlo as Tina Holliday, and Percy Edwards as Psyche. Gibson was played by Frederick Treves and Marlowe by Lockwood West. A Life of Bliss is written by Godfrey Harrison and produced by Edward Taylor. Mm -hmm.